Okay, you know, when I first picked this book up, I had no idea how much I was about to fall in love with it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and as always, we're here to talk about some science fiction fantasy books. But before we get into that, make sure to do me a quick favor, like this video and subscribe to the channel as it does help us grow. And while you're doing all that, make sure to check the description box down below for the link to the Wizard Duo Discord, as well as links to all my social media, including information about my Patreon. And uh, that said, guys, we're here to talk about some Janny words, uh, specifically Cycle of Fire, um, Storm Warden Book 1. This is a bind-up of all three. And this is probably, just to let you know my thoughts and my feelings about this, because A, to let you know, it's got like a 3.94 rating on Goodreads. So I went in with very tempered expectations, and I don't know if it was just I've been burned out on a lot of darker fantasy or a lot of the faster-paced fantasy. Maybe this was just the exact right time for me to read this book. That said, I mean, five-star flawless victory, like, whatcha, finish him! Do, 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 tch, 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 tch. I don't know why we went in Mortal Kombat with that, but we did. Because I enjoyed this story so incredibly much. It's got great characters. It's got an interesting story structure where we get multiple POVs per page, but the way that the story flows is something can happen in one POV and then pick up in another. It's got, I don't know if I mentioned great characters already. I'm just, I'm so excited to talk about Storm Warden because I was unprepared for the level of enjoyment that I got out of this book. Um, specifically, this is a kind of older, and by older, I believe this came out in the 90s, uh, sci-fi and fantasy, so it's a sci-fantasy mix, because this feels very fantasy. And not only just fantasy, nautical fantasy, because a lot of this takes place on water. You can kind of get that hint from the name Storm Warden. It is so, so interesting. I mean, we've got a wizard right here on the cover. I mean, like, he's casting spells here with his magic staff. He's controlling the weather. Um, this would probably be Anne Skier, would be my guess. Uh, he is a storm warden who has kind of gone into exile. He's taken the blame for something that he didn't really do, but, like, he's just this stoic, kind of all-powerful wizard. Um, or is he? It's so good. But basically, when we first meet him, he's just kind of out there minding his business, controlling the weather, for some fishing people, uh, he's got two prodigies that he's kind of taken underneath his wing, and then it comes to find out that he has committed, like, high crimes um, by, like, controlling the weather to, like, wipe out a, a small fishing village. And by small, I mean 4,000 people. And when charged with the, the thing, they're like, hey, did you do it? And he's like, yeah, I did it. And so then they arrest him, and, like, you find these whole political intrigue that is going on within the story because, basically, they kind of want to... Somebody is out to steal Anne Skier's power. And through all of this, we get these kind of prophecies and fate with some really cool and interesting sci-fi elements thrown in there for good measure. We've got great characters. Uh, the two kids are Tian and Emian. Uh, they're brother-sister duo. And, you know, Tian is a young girl who has since, like, had an accident fallen. Uh, she has a, you know, a, a, a crushed foot, so she walks with a limp. She's very, you know, she lives in a fisher society, so, like, because she's so hampered, she, she can't really do a whole lot to help her family, who recently suffered a tragedy a couple years ago. Basically, her brother, Emian, uh, was out fishing with his father, and his father did something overboard. Like, he dived in to get some nets or something, and he got tangled in the nets and never came back up. So, we, we get to analyze his guilt so like the way that their relationship evolves is very different because they're two very different characters Emian kind of holds that resent of resentment he feels responsible for what happened to his father and he lets that fester but then like Tian is very pure and she wants you know she wants to believe in the good in people no matter what you could show somebody to Tian that is completely evil and, you know, she will still... She's basically Luke Skywalker. She will see the good in that person, or she will try to redeem them no matter what. And we're not talking about new Luke Skywalker because it's not real. Anyway, uh, I'm talking old-school Luke Skywalker where she, where he's looking at Darth Vader and goes, I can sense the good in you. That's Tian to me. And then, of course, we've got this young, sickly scribe. 
as well by the name of Yarick. Jarek, Yarick, I don't know how to pronounce it. All I know is his name is Jarek Kirinson. And he is a sickly scribe. Um, his parents, uh, he, he's from this dubious lineage where, like, when he was a young boy, his mother tried to end his life for reasons that we will soon discover. Um, and that's kind of where fate kind of leads in. And then, you know, through, you know, being saved, um, he is claimed by another man before he is then put to death and gets the name Kirinson as a surname. Or I believe that they pronounce it Kirinson Jarek. Anyway, um, because he's small and sickly, he's just kind of stuck up into a room and then taught letters. And then something happens to him, something magical happens to him, and he has to go on an adventure to do something. And I'm, I'm being vague here because this is all woven in together. And what I mean by fate is when we start this prologue, it is Anskir and somebody by the name of the Fire Lord Ivane. And these are two wizards with different power like sets because we've got, you know, people who can control demons, uh, which there are demons. We've got people who get their powers to control the weather. We've got people who can who are empaths and can control or interact with people from long distance. Um, there's all sorts. Of, and then, of course, Fire Lord implies that he can control the element of fire. And it's kind of like something happens between these two. Their relationship falls apart. And a geese is laid down with basically like, hey, you messed up. You betrayed me. Um, until the end of days, if I ever need somebody to help me from your lineage, whether you are here or not, uh, your family will be compelled to come to my aid. And so there's just all this great stuff that is interwoven and delivered um, with, you know, just we've got shipwrecks, we've got battles, we've got strategy, we've got strongmen, we've got the analysis of vulnerability and holding on to guilt and resentment and what that can do to an individual. It is all analyzed here in Storm Warden, and it's really not too terribly long. Um, in this edition, this bind-up edition, uh, which is, is gorgeous, I'm probably going to try and get the hardcovers of this, honestly, uh, signed if I can do it, because uh, Storm Warden, um, like I said earlier, is five stars, but when I, when I say five stars, I don't think you quite understand what this book did for me. Um, I enjoyed the, I, like This was one of those ones where I couldn't put the book down, where I was excited to pick up my book, where I was looking where I was thinking about reading the book when I didn't even have the book near to hand like this this was an absolute gripping page turner and I know it won't be for everybody because it does have a little bit of an elevated prose there are a couple things that Janie Wartz does where like she'll have a character do something and they're like hey I'm gonna need you to give me this thing and you're it, it feels completely out of place and then you got to turn the page and then it's like and then they're doing the thing, and you're like, oh, that's why you wanted the thing. Okay, I get it. And so it's just not all immediate. It's not instant gratification. Like, Jenny Wirtz, for some reason, it just, she makes you work for it, and it works. And I can, I can safely say right now that if the rest of this series lands the same quality as Storm Warden, I'm going to read the entire breadth of Jenny Wirtz's bibliography. Um, at least in terms of novels. Uh, I mean, it's always hard for me to like commit to short stories and novellas and things like that. I haven't even looked at her bibliography yet, but I can tell you what. I enjoyed this so much, and I got so much catharsis out of just experiencing the journey between Anskir and, like, Th Thargus? I think her name is Thargus. Um, the Kisburn Kings and the Keelmarks. And the Storm Falcons are just so cool. Like, a Storm Falcon is like a bird that is like a magical manifestation of bad, inclement weather. It's so darn cool. Um, it's just the way that the mag... Like, this just felt incredibly special and magical. And it, it's frankly, it's flying under the radar. Like, not enough people are talking about this book. They really should. I mean, don't get me wrong. Her War of, Wars of Light and Shadow... Or the big epic series gets a lot of lip service. And don't get me wrong, I am now 100% planning on picking that up at some time in the future. But, like, don't sleep on Cycle of Fire. And in fact, if you are considering, because I hear Wars of Light and Shadow has incredibly purple and elevated prose, very different to Cycle of Fire. Maybe try Cycle of Fire 
first to get a taste of Janny Words because I had a great time with it, and now like it's it's this is almost my gateway into Janny Words's um, work. I am so excited to read these books. I cannot quite contain my level of excitement. I'm trying to not spoil this story for anybody because I want you to honestly read it because uh, I'm just. Just please, 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 if you have the chance, read this book for yourself. I'm going to be continuing with Keeper of the Keys and then Shadowfane. Like I said, I am probably going to keep my bind up, but I'm also probably going to be looking for signed copies of this series because it. I feel like this is going to instantly become a top 10 trilogy and Janie Wirtz is skyrocketing into an all-time favorite author. I promise you that this is good. The way the battles work, the way that everything is just interwoven, and the way that we get to see Jarek overcome his insecurities and Tian forgive, and Emian just struggle with his own demons. It's just so, so darn interesting. Please do yourself a favor and go check out Cycle of Fire. I promise you. It is worth the effort if you like that classic fantasy with a little bit of sci-fi elements and gorgeous prose and beautiful storytelling. Please, this is the one to check out. I feel like I've just begged you to go buy a book for the last three minutes. That's really all I've got for you guys uh, here today. So, till next time, peace out. Stay magical. Bye. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons. Thank you.